whether it's wild crafting plants or whether it's wild foraging, I really like to focus on native plants wherever it is that I'm growing or if I give any advice or recommendations to people, I like to focus on wild crafting or wild foraging uh, because the native plants have very little to no disease problems. They have very little to no pest problems. Um, they normally don't require much more water, if any more water, than what naturally falls in that area. So I'm a big fan of the sort of native plants. And even if I'm establishing a food production system like I have here in the Garden of Eden, I like to establish sort of wild crafted uh, plants, wild crafted foods. And I also like to focus on the native plants because if I want to, I can go out and forage and harvest all sorts of foods that I don't even have to grow myself. So it's way uh, more sustainable and it's way easier to not only grow the wild crafted foods because they do so much better, they have so much less maintenance, but it's also a much more useful skill to know how to wild forage these plants because pretty much all the food you'd ever grow in a garden or find at a grocery store, most of those foods don't actually grow out in nature. They are foods that have been you know, cultivated and bred and even GMO'd uh, for a very long time and they're really not uh, foods that grow and they require all sorts of special maintenance and special care and you know excess watering and you know they have more prone disease and more prone to bugs and so they really don't exist out in the wild. So this is another wild crafted superfood uh, which you can wild forage all over uh, Texas and many of the southern states. It's extremely tasty, super nutritious. I hope this knowledge is useful and beneficial to you, if not to save your life, for radiant thrival. Steam on.